The Lord be with you. And also with you. For all of you watching at home, I pray that you are well. To my knowledge, no one in the congregation has yet come down with the virus. I pray that God's Almighty hand will continue to protect you and His mighty angels stand guard over you. This day is Palm Sunday, so we begin our entrance into Holy Week. Our service today begins with the Palm Sunday procession with palms. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Let us pray. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem, with palms in their hands, gathered to greet you, dearly beloved Son, when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King. When he comes again, may we go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the twelfth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. The next day the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat in it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when they called Lazarus out of the tomb raised him from the dead, continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard that he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Enjoy and sing our hymn, hymn number 442.
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh, to suffer death upon the cross. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his great humility and patience. We may be partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sunday of the Passion is taken from the prophet Isaiah in the 50th chapter, beginning with the 4th verse. Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens, he awakens my ear, to hear as those who are taught. Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, I turned not backward, I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like a flint, I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me? Let us stand up together, who is my adversary? Let him come near to me, behold the Lord God helps me, who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Epistle reading is taken from St. Paul's Epistle to the Philippians, the second chapter, beginning with the fifth verse. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite your eyes for reading the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 27th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, And what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. But all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit on him, and they took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. 
As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests and with the scribes and the elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land, till the ninth hour. About the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, nema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city, and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe, and said, Truly this was the Son of God. There were also many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James, and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. While it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud, and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. He rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. Next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how this impostor said, while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead. The last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting it guard. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thank you, you O oh Christ. Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being in one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one blasphemy for the remission of sins, and I will look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Joint seeing our end of the day, given number 450. Staying shut up in our homes and trying our best to work, 
study, or just pass the time without losing our minds. And yet with each passing day, hope seems to get dashed as numbers continue to rise and the virus strikes ever closer to home. Palm Sunday, of course, is a good day to reflect on dashed hopes in this fallen world, because yes, there's a whole lot of that going on as we move quickly from the cheering crowds lining the way with their waving palms as Christ enters Jerusalem, to seeing him battered and beaten, hanging with a thorn-crowned head on a cross outside the city wall. Dashed hopes. Yes, life in this sinful world has just a little of that, doesn't it? Kind of goes hand in hand with the whole death thing that Adam and Eve brought on us when they turned their backs on God's word and ate what he had told them not to eat. Ever since that day, there have been mornings like the ones that we've been living through in these past weeks, where you turn on the news hoping for the best, only to hear about what's worse. I've long believed, especially when it comes to the CBC, that no news is good news. I know that the saying is supposed to mean that if you don't hear anything, you can assume all is good. But I've taken it in another way, that there's not much good to hear about on the news, and so sometimes it's just better to shut it off. I know in these difficult days that we need to know what's going on, but for the sake of my own mental health and the mental health of others, it's not, probably not a bad idea to sometimes just shut off the news and heed the words of one wise young person at our dinner table. Can we not talk about something else? Because yes, it does get tiring and just a little discouraging to have your hopes dashed day by day. And no, that doesn't lead you anywhere good. Not only makes it hard to stay positive and productive, but it can drive you to anger and frustration toward others, such as the government, because you think that they should have done something different much sooner, and those poor snowbirds or kids from a school trip, and anyone else that you convince yourself didn't properly quarantine themselves to help spread this virus all over the place. Dash hopes. Yes, there's a bit of that in life. You don't have to live long to find that out. Whether it's the Christmas morning or birthday party that doesn't go as planned, or it's a wonderful wedding with the butterflies and roses that leads into life among the burdocks and black flies, where real love is with death, or whether it's the beautiful bundle of joy that you take home from the hospital that cries continuously for nights on end, or those long look for retirement days that are supposed to free you from having to be at work for nine, only to require you to be at the doctor's office for 8.45. Or whether it's the medical treatment that should cure you that doesn't work or does more harm than good. Yes, life has just a little hope dashing in it, doesn't it? Dash hopes. Yes, there's a bit of that going on in Jerusalem this day. For the disciples, and even one has to wonder for the Lord Jesus. His very God and very God, there's no question that Jesus knew what lay ahead for him in Jerusalem. He mentions it often enough in the Gospels. Though he's not naive about where he's riding that donkey too when he enters the city to the cheering of the pilgrim crowds. But you can't help but wonder how it was for him as true man to have the cheering crowds give way to the jeering mob, the joyful hosannas to the hate-filled crucify him, the waving palms to the lashing whip, and the gentle donkey to the heavy cross. The Lord didn't entrust himself to men because he knew what was in their hearts, but all the same it had to be tough. Tough, yes it was that the Lord. After all, even when we know that someone will let us down, because they've always had, it's still hard and hurts when they do. Just because Jesus knew where everything was going didn't mean that he didn't know all that we know with our disappointments in this world. Yes, out of love for us, he went through all that too. In fact, he gathered up all our dashed hopes, from the first ones dashed when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, to the very last ones of the last day, into himself at that moment. He took them all into himself carried them in his heart, right up to the cross, where he groaned out his final pleas, up to a silent heaven, and at his last hope stashed with his final breath. There was, is, and never shall be any greater or deeper hope dashing beloved than the one that can be heard in Christ's mournful cry, Eli, Eli, Namasabachtani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yes, in that moment there is a dashing of hope from the highest heights of heaven down to the deepest depths of hell for the Son of God. No matter what we face or go through in this life, nothing can ever come close to what Jesus goes through in that moment, beloved. And so, yes, He knows and understands what we're feeling these days, as the hopes of each new day can pressure down with every new report. He knows and understands and is with us in it all to comfort and strengthen us. But He goes through all that we go through to do and be far more than just that, beloved. The Son of God has His hope as man dashed beyond all imagining. Give us an undashable hope in Him. 
And thou shalt have hope, yes, beloved, that is what we have in Christ. A hope for a better tomorrow, a better life, and a better world. A hope that cannot and will not be disappointed. The Son of God guaranteed that when he mounted that colt of a donkey and humbly rode it into Jerusalem to take on all our dashed hopes and dreams and suffer and die in complete and utter hopelessness on the cross. Yes, he swallowed it all up into himself, brought an end to it all, so that he could give you the undashable hope of eternal life through the forgiveness of all your sins. So on this special day, and of the ones to come, I encourage you to keep set your hope where true hope is found, in Christ. No, morning by morning, he cannot and will not disappoint you, because he and he alone is the undashable one, a rolled away stone, an empty tomb, made that perfectly clear for all time. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding to your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and the life of the blessed. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people of Christ. Gracious Lord, keep your scattered church in your mercy, that you may endure the assaults of the evil one, and remain faithful for the sake of those numbered within your kingdom, and those who have not yet heard the gospel be brought to faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your Spirit you have gathered us as your church, the promise that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in our midst. Do not allow stress or disaster to distract us from the vocations with which you have called us to serve. In the church, hope, and community, grant to us every gift and blessing needful, that we may honor our calling and serve you to the best of our ability. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Lord, you have established the kingdom of the left and hold accountable all those who govern in this and every place. Blessed guide Elizabeth, our Queen, Justin, her Prime Minister, Doug, your Premier, and all the make and minister and judge are lost. They would serve nobly and wisely, pursuing the path of justice, protecting the citizens entrusted to them. Give them the wisdom and strength needed to bring our land out of crisis and back to stability. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, your grace is sufficient for all our needs. You have promised to be the strength of the weary, the hope of those who fear, the healing of the ill, the fullness of the, those disabled, and the peace of all who are distressed. Here is on behalf of our nation and the world, suffering pandemic and isolation. We especially pray this day for all those that we name in our hearts before you. They may be well supplied by your grace in every time of trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Everlasting Father, it is your will that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of your Son by faith. Give to your word success and deliver from error all those who live in darkness and fear. They may walk in the light of the Lord Jesus and have confidence for the trials of the world and hope for the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Blessed Lord, you give food to the hungry. Provide for all our needs in this mortal life. Grant to us a grateful heart and knowledge to use wise and well all that you have entrusted to our care. Bless those who work to make, prepare, deliver, and serve our daily bread, and give relief to those whose work is being halted. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Holy Lord, as once your Son was welcomed with palms and hosannas, help us to welcome him who comes to us this day in his word and the blessed sacrament of his body and blood. Guard us against false teaching, and help us to discern truth from error, that none may be led astray or lost from the fellowship of your Son. Look with kindness on all who are separated from the Holy Communion, and comfort them with your promises, especially if they are never distant from the mystical body of your Son, the Communion of Saints. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, and our prayer. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. For the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks to your boundless love shown to us, when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, who laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we may not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, rise again to new life. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we ought to magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, In the same house we took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
come. And the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout your days of pilgrimage. And on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the land of his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Join us here in closing hymn number 441.